What what's the worst thing that, that could happen? What's what's the one thing that like like uh, disaster story you've I, had? I was anticipating this question. We could prevent others yeah, from falling into the same others. trap. Hello and welcome to the Videography Network podcast. Today's episode, our guest is the one and only Dom Whiting. How are you doing, Dom? I'm good. I'm good. Happy to be here. It's quite nice. Nice little uh, studio set up. I well, like it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, what do you think to the table? Honestly, get this in your office right now. I wish. I absolutely wish. <laughs> I don't know how much it costs, but it's a nice table. Very nice. Um, so, Dom, you are... I know you as the gear guy. Okay. You're my go-to for any gear questions, any te technology questions, what's the latest camera. Um, Shall we start talking a bit, a bit about gear? Yes. So why, why does it matter that you have the best, the latest gear? What, what does gear say to a videographer? Mm, that, it's a bit of a controversial one here because it depends who you are and who's watching this. I would either say gear is not important at all Mm -hmm. or gear is very important. Mm -hmm. um, I know me, especially as a younger videographer when I was first starting out, everyone's dreaming about the big cameras, the lenses and everything like that. And when you're definitely starting out, I would say that's not the case. You know, you don't need to be worrying about the biggest cameras. Are oh, you shooting in 4K? Things like that. I, I wouldn't worry about that. Um, on the flip side of that, when you're getting a bit more experience and you're in the real world and, you know, you're up against competition, you know, competition when you're bidding for a job, for example, People want to know what gear you've got, yeah. Um, because obviously, as a client, that you know they they want the best. Um, so it's a bit of a controversial one. I'll definitely say it's not important to start out. You yeah. just need to shoot. You need to learn, and you just need to have fun with it. Yeah. Because ultimately, I don't know about you. Well, I know, but we both got into this because we love this. Yeah. We love t making videos. We make love making visual content, and that's it. So it is important towards the later stage when you're when you've made it and it's full time job. But if you're watching this and you're starting out and you're worried about gear. Oh my God, this costs so much. Yeah, yeah. You know, I need all these extra bits and bobs. Forget about it, relax. And I know it's hard for me to say that and for somebody to be like, yeah, sure. Yeah, no kit over here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But th that's the case. Honestly, you know, don't be put down if you've not got the best kit. Yeah, you just it's need the to start with. You just need the basics, yeah. don't you? Having said that, as you've called me the, the gear guy, for me, um, I can't stop buying gear. Yeah. You know, now you've made it. You've not addict. made it, but you know, you, you're getting income from it. You can invest and you can get the nice lenses and everything. So do you have a rule? Do you kind of like say to yourself, right, I'm going to earn this amount and then I'm going to buy myself lenses? Or is it as a, 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 as it comes through basis? Um, so like you get a job where you're going to need a specific lens. You're like, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to jump on it. That does happen for sure. Um, you know, say for example, a job comes in and it's earning me X amount. As long as that lens doesn't cost me more than that, yeah. it's fine because it's an investment mm. and things like that. So although I'm not getting much money from that specific job, mm -hmm. you know, earning that piece of equipment, I definitely do do that. Um, you know, I can persuade myself quite easily. Yeah. I don't know what, but if I had that lens, it would make this job a bit easier. Um, so I definitely do do that. Yeah. You must be a nightmare at the photography show. Yeah, you know what? I love going to the photography show. Same. Um, I mean, last year was a little bit disappointing. Um, and it's 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 just a brilliant place to be there. Um, yeah. You know, obviously COVID ruined that a little bit, but I, I just love it. You know, all the supplies there, all the stands, getting hands on with bits of kit that you've not seen before. Yeah. And, you know, getting a lot of free advice mm -hmm. and, you know, just chatting away. I love it. I absolutely love it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you're in, you're just in with your like other videographers, aren't you? Yeah. Like, that's so, it. Or photographers, but we're all in the same boat. We, we are yeah. in the same boat. Yeah. Yeah. Some of us do both. Yeah. I know, I know you quite handy with photos as well. Yeah, you know, you know what? That's that's one thing I always say to people. Say, you know, do you do stills as well? Mm. And I, I love doing stills. Yeah. Um, you know, I always advertise myself as a videographer, um, and you know, movie things. But yeah, I find that when I get behind a stills camera and I'm taking a few stills, mm. it complements my video skills just yeah. as well. You know, it's nice to kind of take a break and take a break from video and get a bit creative with stills. I definitely think it goes hand in hand. Mm. You know, you learn new things from doing stills. And if you're a photographer, I would say dabble in video because yeah. it gives you a new appreciation. Yeah, absolutely. I know a few guys that have done done it the other way around, yeah. started as photography, moved into video. Um, me personally, I don't have the patience for photos. No? No, you got to have patience, haven't you? you got to uh, wait for that moment. And it- Depends what you're doing. 
True. I, I know a couple of nature photographers and you know they just sit out in the woods yeah, all yeah. day for one photo. That's and it. And you know what? The photos are brilliant and it's, it's worth it. But I personally, just like you, yeah, I couldn't sit out all day for one no, photo. No, no, no. I mean, they say don't work with children and animals anyway, don't they? So They do say that. And I always find myself working with children and animals. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. Or both. Have you ever worked with both? Mm, I'm not sure. Could get know. messy, couldn't it? I maybe have. I can't remember. That's the thing. I love. I love the variety of work. Yeah, I, that's. I mean, we've got so many questions prepared because there's so many ways that this this episode could go. Yeah. Um, but I I I am avid follower of you on social media, and you are doing a different job every day. And um, yeah, what is that? Not the dream job. It is. It is the dream. It must be. Um, you you know what? I I do pinch myself. You know, sometimes you're on a you're on a job and it's absolutely hectic. You're like, oh, you know, you're stressing. You're absolutely sweating, like you know, it's not yeah. it's not ideal. But then some jobs, you just think, "Hang on a minute, this is exactly what I've done this for." Yeah, you know, uh, I, I'd I'd live in a mansion by now if it didn't buy all the kit I had. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, you know absolutely. What I mean? And but some days I'm just like, you know what, this is just beautiful. Mm-hmm. How lucky am I? You know that I get to do this, travel all over, yeah, film loads of different people. It, it is the dream. Yeah, yeah, and that's great. I, and I think there's a certain skill involved in that to be able to kind of almost like a chameleon. You know, you take you're taking on these different types of jobs. There's a lot of videographers out there that just that focus on one thing. Like I brought up in a previous episode, there's a guy that just does dentist videos, and he's he's known as the videographer for dentists. It's in America, so you yeah, know, you know what it's like over there. They love their <laughs> teeth, don't they? Not like yeah. us Brits. Um, but seriously, like. Uh, you've you've got a very broad spectrum. So, um, how do you market when you're kind of a, a master of everything? Mm. You you know what? Um, h- how do I market? I think I just I'm just me. Yeah. Um, you know, I know I t- I tell people that I'm not a production company. Yeah. Um, which obviously you know insight is. Yeah, that's one of the parallels that I was going to make. Yeah. So I, as a freelance videographer, I kind of sit in the middle between a, a client yeah. and a production company. Yeah. Um, you know, I think there's a lot of brilliant production companies out there mm-hmm. and I like to work as a freelance videographer. Yeah. For, for a few reasons. Yeah. Um, you know, it puts me in the middle um, between, like I said, the production company and a client. And being a freelance videographer does get, mean that I can work on so many different things. Yeah. Um, you know, like you just said, there are videographers that do certain things and production companies that focus on certain things, um, you know, certain industries. But as a freelance videographer, I just get to experience everything. Yeah. Um, and you know what? Some people say that's not a good idea. You should always focus on a niche and have like a, a target audience. Yeah. But for me, I just love being in the middle, being very creative. You know, I don't work in a big team. Um, I am myself, but I do love the opportunity to then work into a team. Yeah. Um, I, I, there's just so many benefits. You know, I am my own person. I could do what I want when I want. Yeah, yeah. Which sounds a little bit... You can um, buy gear when you want. Exactly. I'm not allowed to do that. I know. You've got to as run it a past. a board of directors, <laughs> I've got to run it past. I've got to, yeah. I got, I got to lie, cheat and steal my way to to that that net latest yeah. lens. But- exactly. And, and you know what? It's not only just my creativity, but I think um, offering a different type of service. Yeah. Because... Um, you know, I fit in a lot with production companies, you know, where we work together and things 100%. like that. But I know that going through some production companies is very expensive. Yeah. And for small companies, they can't afford that. Absolutely. So I like to just offer myself and my kit yeah. as a freelance videographer yeah. for a more affordable choice. Mm. Because for me, and, you know, we do this for the love. Mm. Obviously, the money helps. It's uh, a job. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, but, you know... For me, it's it's nice to offer that to people. Yeah, because yeah, video yeah. is so important now. We know that. Oh, it's massive. I mean, like we. So we we've had a guest um, previously within the marketing sector. Actually, you know Andy. Hubbard. Yes. Yeah. So. Uh, and a lot of the conversation there was about the importance of video. Now, I don't think we need to talk about that because no. we are living and dreaming this every day. Check the previous podcast. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just check out the previous podcast if you need to be sold on why video is important. But let's let's rewind. Yeah. So, how did you get into video? Um, you know what? Beautiful story. Um, it, it started back in school. Yeah. Um, you know, GCSEs uh, took media studies and I went overboard. Yeah. Right. You know, make this little project. You know, people made some pretty decent little things. I went overboard. Right. Yeah. I needed police in my um, story. I needed an ambulance in my story. So I literally contacted the police. I contacted ambulance. I had meetings left, right and center. Yeah. And I made it how I wanted to make it. How old were you here? Uh, like 14, 15? GCSEs, maybe, yeah, 14, 15, yeah, yeah. something like that. 
Um, and I think I just really got the bug of like being on set. Yeah. Um, you know, being behind the camera, calling the shots. I loved it. And um, it was it was a beautiful story from then, you know, back onto A-levels. Yeah. Same thing. Went absolutely overboard. Where did you go, Damon? Bosworth. Right. Yeah. Oh, so okay. before uni, yeah. Bosworth Academy. Yeah. Um, then I worked actually as a media technician. So I was in like teaching kids how to edit. Right. And things like that. Literally the year after I did my A-levels. Okay. Then okay. straight into uni. Yeah. Um, I did one foot, mm-hmm. doing media production. And in my first year, actually, I started the brand Don Whiting Media. Right. Okay. And it was simply just a name to work under, you know, yeah. almost have a portfolio underneath that. And it stuck ever since. Yeah. And that was back in 2014. Wow. Um. So you're almost at your 10 years and you've only just almost, really scratched the service. Almost, but it depends which what day it is and what I'm thinking yeah, about. Because yeah. um, although, yes, did start the brand on White Media then, I wasn't full-time freelance yeah. until quite a bit after. None of that works on your portfolio page. Yeah, no. yeah, exactly. But um, it all went towards where you are now. Definitely. I mean, yeah. when I was at uni, you know, I was trying to build a clientele yeah. and things like that. And I was doing the odd job here and there. And it really like worked hand in hand with my degree. Yeah. You know, um, Everyone, everyone on my course did the course, mm. but not everyone did all the extra bits. And, you know, some of them, well, many of them don't actually do anything in this industry now. So yeah. I am so thankful that, you know, I have learned, I do think it's a lot of luck. Your teacher must have thought like, wow, you must have been his star pupil. Look at him organizing the police and ambulances to turn up to. The thing is, um, I would probably say no, because academically, mm. not very on it yeah you know not very clever academically if you yeah, sit yeah. down with a pen and paper probably not ah, but no creatively, one needs to be good with a pen and paper these days uh, yeah i mean you know you're looking at production schedules and things like that yeah I, yeah that's fine I'm, I'm quite good with that i think my call sheet for gcse work was like quite a few pages long yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so so it's similar to me actually like there's i think i'm a bit older than you so when i was in school you, there weren't cameras lying mm. around they were they were like you know for the posher schools yeah, yeah. I know, maybe you went to a posher <laughs> school um but so for me we started out doing radio so we would just record on a cassette mm. for our english uh, lit class and uh, i remember just being kind of like almost like the the radio host on this on this on this project we were working at and realizing wow i, I really enjoy this i actually took took it home with me and started doing all this sort of radio shows at home and then that just naturally evolved into video. I convinced my dad to buy me a, a handy cam, uh, you know, Sony, yeah. whatever it was, yeah. um, and uh, sort of home camera. And then from there, I never stopped filming. I would take it everywhere with me. And, and I've still got all the tapes, mm. you know. Um, the only problem was back then, tapes were expensive. So yeah. I would I would film something and then a few months later, I'd record over it. You know, it wasn't like nowadays we've got banks and banks of the stuff, but actually like you were destined for this if you were doing all that pre-production stuff at such yeah. a young age. Honestly, you know, I think what, if I wasn't doing this, what else would I be doing? And I just can't think, Yeah, you know, yeah. there's plenty of jobs out there. This is endless, but what would we be doing? I don't know. I had a question with regards to the company company name because- Obviously, we it was such a difficult thing to come up with the name uh, Insight, and it took months. And, mm. and randomly, just somebody threw it out during the one of the conversations we had, and it was like, oh my god, yes, and that's the one. That's the one. But so, so you've gone with 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 Don Whiting, yeah, right? Don Whiting Media. So, was have you ever been tempted to sort of come away from? I, I know you said you're happy um, in in your role as yeah. kind of in between the, the production stage and the client as a, as a freelancer. Yeah. You've called yourself. I would think you were a lot more than that. Um, and that's the biggest compliment I can pay to you. Okay, we, we've worked with you many times. <laughs> yeah. and I would never look at you and say you're a freelancer. Yeah. Um, but technically, I guess that's yeah. what you would call yourself. Um, but have you ever thought about, you know, there might be people listening that have started a video company. What's, it, should they go by their own name or should they look for a brand? I would say, um, you know, I, I suppose this is probably a question for a, a marketer because yeah. um I stick with Don White Media and I did dabble with it because I thought, you know, that's just me and my name. Mm. It's not very, uh, you know, transferable mm. with things. You know, even like the letterhead, you know, what kind of a logo do you make out of Don White Media? What is the logo for that? Your face? Well, it could be my face. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I like just being Don White Media because it's very personable. Yeah. And that's one thing I kind of learned through my uh, business development is personality sells. And that's yeah. just one thing I really stand by. Absolutely. So yeah, I've never really thought about changing it properly. Yeah. I mean, you know, um, we've had yeah. the same problem. Um, you just reminded me, like when, when we when we started Insight, people knew me from previously as Adam yeah. King videographer, right? And um, what what ended up happening was sometimes when we started to grow the team, and we we would be um, booked out, and it wouldn't be me that showed up, and people were like, "Where's Adam?" 
Yeah. And, and, and not going to lie, not naming names, but we had complaints. Mm. Not because the videographer that turned up was no good, but because it wasn't me. Yeah. And they had the relationship with me, exactly what you just said. And I think that is really important, you know, to have that relationship because people want to trust you. They know you, they get to know, you know, you become friends with a lot of your clients, don't yeah, you? Yeah, yeah. And that's why it works so well, because if you're going into their business and sticking a camera in their face and they don't know you, yeah. It can be awkward. Um, it is awkward. I mean, definitely for me, quite quite funny, just what, what you were saying is, um, you know, our parents and things, oh, why don't you take on another member of staff? Yeah. Why don't you take on another member of staff? And I'm very against that, yeah. you know, because I want to be just my own. And you yeah. know what? I could very much do with the help from another person. Absolutely, again, yeah. With editing. But um, yeah, you know, it's, it's that thing of, you know, Dom knows this and mm. especially on company things, um, you know, you I know about, so many different things now. Mm. I mean, one of my clients is uh, like the scissor lift companies, right? Yeah. Or the rental companies. And I know so much about these scissor lifts now. Yeah, it's yeah. unbelievable. I know everything about these lifts now. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's a backup career for you if if you want. Yeah, you know what? There's quite a few backup careers I could go for. Yeah, yeah. 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 What's your what's your favorite project you've ever worked on? Favorite project. Okay. Uh, your show reel, by the way, it was some some showing. I mean, it's like fifty cent pops up at one point. Fifty I believe. cent pops up. Drake like, pops up. I mean, yeah, yeah. yeah I mean, yeah. 50, <laughs> so I go to fifty cent because of my age. Drake's a little bit, you know. I'm too old for that. <laughs> no, but, I wouldn't say that. But, no, but, but yeah, yeah. Um, show real. I'm I'm actually very proud of that. I, I won't lie. Um, I am very proud, and I'm very thankful for what, what mm. I've created. Um, yeah, I, I I like getting that reaction from people. You know. Wow, your show real. It yeah. means a lot. It really does. Yeah, I mean, it, um, you know, it comes from the heart. It, it, it's an impressive thing. And I don't know, name dropped people, but also the shots look great. You know, the yeah. way it flows, everything. Um, and 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 obviously we've worked together before, so I know I know your stuff. Stuff's good. Um, but uh, yeah, you still not answered though. What's your favorite? Favorite. Project? That's it. Favorite. My You're not favorite. Out of this. No, 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 there's not. No. Um, I don't think I have a favorite project. Okay. I think I have a favorite uh, working scenario. Right. And that is where I am just left to my own devices. Amazing. As a camera operator. Yeah, yeah. That That's kind of the favorite job is, it's not the project, it's yeah. the scenario. Yeah. I mean, you know what, there's been some amazing projects I've worked on. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, I think the scenario is is more important to me. Amazing. And favorable. Than Very me. safe answer. Then you're not going to disappoint any of your clients who are listening in with that, are you? I yeah, I love everything to be honest. Yeah. I never I never leave a job and think, "Oh my god, I'm never doing that again." No. Um, you know, I just love creating visual content and uh there's yet to be a job that I've hated. It's disappointed you. Amazing. Uh, we were talking with uh, earlier with with Andy just going back to that episode again about the importance of a behind the scenes video and I know you love behind the scenes i'm always I, getting tagged yes whenever we're together i my notifications are popping off what what do you love about the behind the scenes i, I love behind the scenes um quite a few reasons it's, it's great for socials yeah um i also think it's great for showing me at work yeah um because you know what i think when i post a video a client video the end result people don't really understand what went into that? Yeah. You know, people, some people joke about, oh, I could have done that on my iPhone, whatever. Yeah. Um, and I think behind the scenes really shows, yeah, it's me at work. This yeah. looks into it. You know, I'm not just shooting on a little. It, it's uh, important for the clients to see, your potential clients to see, I yeah. want to work with that guy. He seems like he's relaxed, he's fun, he knows what he's doing. Yeah. Um, I love I love working with you for behind the scenes because the gear again because <laughs> you're the gear guy. Yes, you know you got this huge setup and it's just like wow that looks impressive. Clients love that. They love it. Um, they love it. You know, I think I know the first question I answered was gear is not that important, but um, you know, especially when clients are spending a lot of money with you because yeah. it is you know that's just the cost of video production these days. They, yeah, it's not We're, a cheap service. No, it's not anymore. a cheap service. And I think they get put at ease a little bit when they see you turn up with so much kit. Yeah. Like, yeah. Oh, okay, my money is being well spent here. Um, and, you know, it does, does make a difference. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll tell you one thing that you um, really sold to me in the early days we were working together and we ended up getting our own one as well because uh, I saw the client's reaction to it, but that was the external monitor. Yes. Being able to put an external monitor in front of a client so that they can watch from anywhere in the in the shop floor. Yeah. They're not having to huddle over the camera with you. So many benefits for that. It, it's fantastic. And yeah. it just gives off an, a really good impression that this is, you know, you've paid for something here and this is what you're going to get. So It's their experience as well. 
Yeah. You know, it's not them just watching you yeah. shoot something. And the amount, of, the amount of time that must save where maybe there's something in the shop that sh- shouldn't be there, you know, yes. in, in, a, in an industry that we're not that familiar with, for example, something health and safety. Or, yes, that exactly. They can just watch in. That's exactly what I was going to yeah. say. Yeah. So, you know, someone in the background, he's not wearing a face mask nowadays yeah, or, or a gloves. helmet. Yeah. Pe- they notice that. Yeah. Because, you know, like I was saying about my favorite scenarios when I'm left to my own devices, yeah. making it look beautiful. I'm not always checking editorially yeah, what's in the shop. Like that. Yeah. Unless you've read their like training manual, you know, yeah. which is, uh, you know, if they want to pay for that, I'll put the hours in. But, <laughs> but um, yeah, that's really important. And, and I know that it, it went down well with the client as yeah. well. Um, and, you know, one time even just having the gimbal, we, we got the latest gimbal, uh, the Ronin. When yeah. the Ronin first came out, we were on a, a conference shop floor with the gimbal and I hadn't really used it. And mm. I, I, I was like, you know what, other than the odd panning shot, we, this is built for more. So I got one of the sales executives for the, the, the company we're working for to walk around the conference floor, just talking to camera. And I was just backing off and I had the whole crew with me. One, one holding a light on yep. t- following and another just holding my t-shirt so that I, I could just focus on very the person. important. Yeah. Very yeah. Important. Cause I mean, you, you trip with one of them things. You're going to, that's a lawsuit on your hands, isn't it? But yeah. Um, Anyway, we finished it. It looks amazing because it's a busy conference. This is before COVID. A busy conference room and this guy's just walking towards me. and Walk and talk, isn't it? Yeah, right? yeah. Anyway, immediately afterwards, a sponsor came running after me. Just, after, just from his stand, he'd seen this happening and he was like, business card. If I'd have known yeah. you were here, I wish... That's the worst thing you can hear as a videographer. I wish I'd known you were going to be here. But yeah, it was uh, the 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 gear. It definitely it definitely wins yeah, people. It, it is important, and I think it can um, give a new dynamic, especially mm. like you were just saying there with the gimbal. Yeah, um, you know, like shallow depth of field. Everybody wants a shallow depth of field. Yeah, and yeah. you can do that with any any lens, to be honest. You can, but it's it's made a lot easier with with the, with, with faster the lenses. Stuff. Yeah, hundred um, percent. Yeah, you know what? You can have all the gear in the world, mm. but if you're not using it to its full potential, there's no point in having it. Yeah. Um, you know that that's just a statement, really. Uh, this is this might be a difficult one, but I'll drop it on you anyway. We'll Go see on. where it goes. I'm a videographer. I've just started. Yeah. I've got X amount of money. What's the what kit do I need? Like, what, oh what, my lord! What's the basic kit? Like <laughs> you know, a wide, a close. What what, yeah. what, what you, do I need? Pete, Pete, I do get that question now and again, mm. um, and it, it's always a surreal moment. I'm like, why are you asking me for? Yeah. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah. I'm, yeah. Fine. Yeah, I've seen, nice I've seen your kit bag. Yeah. Oh. It is a nice compliment, um, and I can never answer it. Uh, it depends where you are and what you're doing. Mm. Definitely need to answer a few more questions. I mean. I get that question quite a lot from makeup artists and hairdressers. Right. And they're like, you know what? I really want to buy a camera. What camera shall I buy? Yeah. And for those kind of people, I'm always saying it's in your pocket. Yeah. It's your phone. Yeah. Right. If you're a videographer, which is actually what you asked, um, it really depends on what you want to be filming. The, the, the thing is, I remember when I started out and I had X amount of budget to, yeah. to start the company and I knew I needed a wide lens. I needed a good interview lens. I needed um, maybe like a 200 mil for mm. any kind of like event, like awards nights, you yeah. know, where you're in the rafters. You need tripods, obviously the camera, uh, yeah. which is these days, I mean, so we both shoot on Sony, don't we? Yes. And I know Sony is a big win for video. It is. But there's others that are catching up like yeah. Panasonic and... Um, I would say brand is very important. Yeah. Especially in the freelance world nowadays. Um, you know, people don't want freelancers that are shooting on Canon, see C, C, the C range, you know, yeah. C100, things mm-hmm. like that. Um, that's just not what the broadcasters want. That's not what people want. No. There's it's, there's definitely trends yeah. in, in video production and the camera kit. And Sony is one of them. And that's that's the reason I'm Sony. Yeah. There are trends. Um, yeah. And I suppose that probably will answer the question as well is, you know, where do you want to be taking your yeah, videography from to what kit you need? Yeah. Because like, if you just wanted to say, maybe focus on weddings, yeah, then a DSLR and a few lenses is probably all you're going to need. A couple yeah. of LEDs. I would definitely say audio. Do never forget about audio. Sorry. Yeah. We've not even talked about that, no, have we? No. Um, so important. Audio, I think um, a lot of people forget about that mm. and they don't worry about it. But actually, audio really makes... A video. Yeah, yeah. You know, you could film the best thing in the world. Yeah. But if the audio that goes alongside it is rubbish, yeah. it just makes that watching experience, that viewing experience yeah. terrible. And I, and I remember like learning this and I was like, oh my Lord. Yeah. You know, it's 50-50. It's not, audio is not 
our little 10% that makes the video yeah. is 50 50. Mm. So never forget about audio. No, it's. People it's, always go for the lenses and cameras, but don't forget about audio. Yeah. And, you know, also lighting as well. Yeah. I mean, again, I'd still say audio was the, the more important because bad audio is, it's ruined. Yeah. And lighting, there's certain things you can do, which we won't reveal here. Yeah. We won't reveal our secrets too much. But yeah, um, lighting is the three, it's the three major things yeah 100 really. percent. it's you, not all about the camera no when i first started lighting wasn't really um a big you know it wasn't subject important. on my mind yeah yeah and actually in recent years i fell in love with lighting and i think lighting is more important now than ever well that that's that's funny you should say that because my idea of lighting and and this shows my sort of naivety when i first started was get the led panels and just throw it on them yeah. like one each side yeah it, it really was and you you know just tweaking that ever so slightly even just lifting the lights up and yeah. at an angle or whatever and you know the whole three-point lighting setup it it it's so simple yeah, yeah you yeah. just have to you know if i was giving advice to a new starter i'd say get onto youtube and watch those videos every second of the day that you have yeah. spare when you're on the toilet be watching videos on three-point lighting because it will make no matter what camera you've got no that, yep. that can make all the difference and obviously get yourself some decent mics as well. Yeah. When you were starting out, Dom, um, for me, I always I always saw rival videographers, whether it be freelance or other companies, as competition. Yep. And I was almost taught by my previous boss to stay away from the competition. Yeah. And it was, it was, I could never understand it. And there was one, one part where a, a, a videographer had moved back to Leicester, started the bit, started a business and he, he would call me quite often and we would chat and we would share ideas and it's great. It was like therapy, you know, yeah. somebody who understands what I'm going through day to day. And this boss of mine hated it. One time he, he literally took the phone out of my hand and put it down and said, stop spilling all our secrets. And, you know, how wrong was he? Very wrong. Uh, you know what? I can understand the fear. Yeah. Um, I mean, if you're not happy and, um, you know, feel like you, if you don't feel like you're in a good position, I can 100% see why other videographers may become rivals. Mm. I mean, for me, um, competition, if you like to call it, mm. my, you know, other videographers that are local to me, they've helped me out plenty of times. Yeah, same. Um, you know, if I can't do a job, if I'm already booked, I'll ask such and such, you know, yeah. I've got, we all, we all have a, a little list of people we go to. Yeah. Um, I know I've given advice to other videographers and they've given advice to me. I think some people maybe have um, a difficult attitude sometimes mm. and they want to become your rival. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I wouldn't necessarily say they are rivals. I would 100% learn from them. I watch what other people are putting out and I'm like, you know what? That's brilliant. Yeah, I like that idea or that approach they've taken. There are so many businesses out there. And there's I so much work as well. I can't create a video for every company. No. And, um, you know, you know this more than me. One video, you need a lot more than just one video for, for a business. Yeah, yeah absolutely. So it's a continuous thing. It's, there's plenty of work out there. Yeah. And I, I like coming together and chatting with people like you. Yeah. You know, what you've been doing recently. Oh, that's really cool. You know, it's, it's awesome. It's just like in, in hairdressers, you know, you're chatting about this and that. Yeah, yeah. The school mums, you know, you have your little groups, don't you? Yeah, yeah. Videographers. Vide videographers have like I've found that like, obviously when you start your own business, as you, as you know, you, you know, it's quite a personal thing, isn't it? Because you you, yeah. you carry it on your, on your sleeve, your heart on your sleeve a lot of the time. And so I've surrounded myself lately with with videographers, you know, we're on the same page, I think. We're dealing with the same things day to day, and, and I appreciate that. Um, what What's trending at the moment, Dom? You, what's out there trending? This is a difficult question because day to day it changes, but what are you seeing a lot of requests for? I am seeing a lot of requests for internal video content now. Right. Um, you know, I think a lot of people think, right, advertising, I need one promo video that sits on a website. But yeah. um, I think people are really understanding that it saves people a lot of time and money yeah. in video. You know, I, I went through a couple of induction processes now, Yeah. you know, internal, internal health and safety videos. I would say that's trending a lot. Um, social media stuff, that's that's trending. Yeah, all It's the time. always trending, to be honest. So yeah. maybe we can't say it's trending because it's always there. Yeah. Um, there was a big trend last couple of years on live streams. Yeah. And I, I did a lot of that personally. Mm -hmm. That's kind of dying down now. Yeah, and I think with the events being affected as they've been, yeah. 
that was uh, I remember we were having a lot of big conversations about some events yeah. all over the place and we were actually in talks with yourself at one point if yes, you remember that's right and then all those events fell off a cliff um I know they're coming back but I think a lot of them are coming back with dented budgets or sort of cautious budgets yeah. so I think we're probably looking at next year live streaming being a cop topic of conversation again do you think um from events possibly uh, I, I've had actually just this last week, I've had two inquiries. Right. Um, and they're for small things. And I think people, although we all want to get to conferences and yeah. events now, I think also there's just an element of uh, convenience. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, this week, it, it, there's nothing stopping them holding the event in person. Yeah. But I think it's convenience. Yeah. You know, it's not such a big deal, this award ceremony or whatever it is. Mm. Um, so it's convenience. Yeah, absolutely. Um, another question I had for you was um, what you, you mentioned earlier that you've got to travel a lot. You've got yes. to experience a lot of different types of jobs, but also a lot of different countries. And where's the best place you've ever traveled to? The best place, I would say, um, is well, probably my favorite. Mm. I'm not sure whether I would say it's the best, but actually um, Abu Dhabi. Um, I went there three years in a row with um, the Richest Group. Um, they were kind of a step between my uni degree and full-time Don White Media. Mm. Um, so, you know, I was working with them quite a lot and um, it was amazing. I learned a lot from being abroad. Again, I met a lot of videographers out there and just understanding their way of work. And it's, there's nothing like working in the sun at the F1. It was beautiful. Yeah. And I definitely am very thankful for those experiences because they've helped contribute to my to my showreel. Yeah. And those shots definitely do stand out. Yeah. You know, there's um, we have a map in our office of the the, the, the world, the world map, um, as it's more popularly known. Yeah. Um, and uh, we, we scratch, it's one of those oh, scratch ones. I love that. We scratch every country that we've visited. And, you know, you only have to look at that and I'm sure yours would be something similar. And you think to yourself, Wow. wow. You know, there's only two continents I've not been to, and that's Antarctica okay. and Asia, right? right? So they're on the to-do list. I Would you know. still want to go to Anto Antarctica, though? Because that's it's cold. I mean, yeah, um, but uh, lately it feels like we live in Antarctica anyway. Like, yeah. um, I, I'm struggling to warm up. I don't know if I'm just getting old, but I'm struggling to stay warm. Oh, God. Uh, but no, Antarctica, yeah. I mean, what could you do out there? It's got to be something to do with um, the wild, going back to the wildlife yeah. again, I David guess. David Attenborough. David Attenborough, yeah. yeah. I, think he's got, I think he's sorted for a film crew, though. Um, <laughs> so this is a dangerous one, Dom. Okay. And I want you to be really honest with me, right? Okay. Because I've got a great story for this, but I want to hear what yours is. What What's the worst thing that, that could happen? What's What's the one thing that, like, like uh, disaster story you've I, had? I was anticipating this question. Yeah. I, I think it's... Um, we could prevent others yeah, from falling into the same others. trap. I mean, I think I've had a lot of... Um, you know, little minor things that have gone wrong. Yeah, like a lapel that didn't work. Yeah, or lapel, a memory audio. Card. Yeah. I mean, batteries, that's always a bit of a challenge. Yeah. Um, you know, you think you've got enough batteries. Actually, you never you're have. on a day shooting, you never have. Yeah. Um, One of my biggest uh, sayings on that whole danger of, well, not danger, but, you know, uh, things going wrong is yeah. that, the, and I, I have carried this with me since uni, mm. video production it's just video, right? Not like you're doing heart surgery. No. If you mess up in heart surgery, somebody's dead. Yeah. No matter what we do, 99% of the time, nobody's going to die. Yeah. Okay. Obviously something, yeah. Anyway, there might be something. There might be something. There might be a scenario out there. It's, but... it's just video. There's yeah. nothing stopping you going back and redoing it. Yeah. So that's really helped me ease. You know, if something really does go wrong. Just chill. Just chill. Yeah. You can do it again. Yeah. Or, or yeah. Maybe unless it's a wedding or something. Or... We I was going to say that, yeah. Yeah, but I always carry that. It's just video production. It's not heart surgery. Yeah. I can't remember who told me that, but yeah, that's carried with me a lot. Yeah. I mean, last week I had a really bad, big disaster and maybe it's the worst one, actually. I had to cancel a job. Wow. Um, Simply because my car broke down. Oh, I've heard about this. Yeah, so... You, you, you put it on social media, didn't you? I did, you? Yeah, I did. Yeah. Um, I was on the way to Glasgow and Mate. there was no way of getting there. And you know what? Thankfully, really nice client. Yeah. No problems. I just rang them and said, listen... It wasn't a live event or anything? It was a live event. Yeah. But you know what? They had, I think they had a couple of creatives on it. Okay. So it was covered. Yeah. Um, and that that's the thing. Can't be helped. It can't be helped. Yeah, unless you get a backup for every job. But if it's... You can't do that physically no. because... Um, as, a, as a videographer, you know, we take deposits and things like that. Yeah, yeah. If I was giving out deposits for every single job I needed backup for, the yeah. business wouldn't be there. Yeah, exactly. Um, and I definitely wouldn't get the business because I'd be charging too much. Yeah, yeah. Um, that was probably the worst one recently. Uh, apart from that, yeah, like you said, you know, it's batteries, it's SD cards. Yeah. It's audio gone wrong. Um, often actually sometimes not hitting record. 
Oh, wow. Yeah, I think I've been there. And you know when you get into the loop of uh, recording and stopping opposite? Yeah. So, you know, say, for example, I'm recording you now. Actually, I'll stop in the camera. Oh, And then when yeah. I want to stop recording... When you're kind of on autopilot, Then you, you record. Yeah, and, and that red light pops yeah. and you... Oh. And then or, when you go to take a... Rec- you know, do a take. It's already saying recording for two minutes. I'm like, I'm going to... Hang on a second. I've been here 20 minutes. Yeah, what's yeah. going on? Um, but it happens, like it you said. Happen. And the only thing you can really do is, with things like memory cards, I have a little, I, I have a little pack of backups. It's got a lapel in it, a memory card in it. Oh no it's way! It's got what else has it got in it? Um, a, a lens cleaner. Yeah. It's like a survival um, pack. Yeah. You know, yeah. if I was stuck in the mountains, I'd turn to that <laughs> before I would my menu. And you're kit. sorted. Yeah. You're sorted. Yeah. Um, so there's all of that. Oh, but it's obviously got batteries in it. One of each yep. as well, because it's different cameras. Um, but we've all been there. Um, I mean, SD cards, I don't know if many people know this, but um, when you accidentally format a card that you shouldn't have formatted, mm. that's happened a couple of times. Yeah, same. Now, with us Sony shooters, we're in trouble because we can never record that. Right. Because of the way that they deal with it. But if you're yeah. a Canon shooter out there or any other shooter, it's easy to recover. you're fine, you can recover it. Wow. But Sony... When you format it, you properly format it. Yeah, yeah. So just just be aware. God. You Quick put, tip. You, you make my hair stand up on end, but uh, I'll tell you my one because my one's quite funny. Um, so uh, we were filming in Prague yeah. and we'd been filming there all week at a conference. And on the final day of the conference, there was a awards ceremony to hand out awards to the sponsors and people. And one of our sponsors was up for an award. So it was really important. But we we're actually also working as official videographers for the whole event. So we worked yeah. with a couple of sponsors and the whole event. There's about five of us out there we're all staying in a big airbnb and our we got back on the the last day and we had about an hour till this award ceremony so all of our stuff was the the, the hotel room was like a bomb site by this point you yeah because you don't you, you only you're only in it for an hour you're only there to sleep yeah, and then you're yeah. out the door the next morning so i took it upon myself we had an hour spare to tidy the apartment so in one suitcase i just shoved all the trash all the dirty clothes uh, light stands, things mm. we didn't need. And in the other one, I put all the gear, the cameras, the batteries, everything, right? And then we, and then I actually did it in such record time. I had time for a 15 minute nap, right? Cheeky. Yeah, you know how important that is on a sort of 12 hour day. Oh, 100%. Anyway, so we head off to the, um, to the uh, the venue and the venue is where they give out the Nobel Peace Prize, oh, okay. right? So we get there, massive security. We're led through all these corridors. We're checked, everything's checked, you know, du- doubly checked. And then we're led round to the backstage area and it is beautiful. This hall where they give out this amazing mm. award and uh, people are starting to arrive. And so, you know, the first thing you do is you get the gear and you set it all yeah. up, unzip the suitcase, swung it open, I picked up the wrong suitcase. <laughs> I'd brought all of our dirty boxer shorts and the light stands. Are you joking? I swear. Yeah. So I looked at, <laughs> I looked at my boss and my boss looked at me, right? The only thing out of some miracle, the only thing that was in that bag that was of use to us in that moment was a GoPro. Oh, right? okay. So we gave a GoPro to on a little handheld stick yeah. to someone and they started walking around as the sort of orders were being served, GoProing it. Of course, none of that footage was ever but used, yeah. but it was just show showing up the appearances. Whilst I jumped in an Uber, thank God for Uber. It was when Uber had first appeared as yeah. well. I jumped in an Uber and I did a round trip. It was about 40 minute round trip, grabbed the proper suitcase, got back, went through all of the security again, just in time for, for the awards to start set wow. everything up record time yeah you know, camera on the main stand handheld in in amongst the audience and the day was saved thank god but can you imagine the feeling in my chest when i threw that zip unzip that suitcase it they were the two identical red suitcases so that's my message to everyone watching at home and listening at home yeah don't buy the same suitcase no always split them Get them different. Wow. Because, yeah, it was funny. And I mean, it wasn't funny in the time, but when we look back- You must have been sweating buckets. Oh, I hate it. And that's not actually my worst ever story. There's a oh, wow. real bad one, but I'm not going to share that okay, in fine. any public forum. Um, so uh, anyway, so I think 
we've probably spoken about so much and we could go on more. We'd have yes. to get you back on again because- Happily, that's not a problem. Yeah, because it's just, you know, you really are a joy to work with, Dom. I don't want to get emotional. No, that's but, what, I appreciate that. I really, but, really do. But it's been great working with you on the projects. It's, it seems like we've done quite a few the, this last yeah. 12 months as well. Um, and, you know, it's it's uh, it's been a pleasure. So thank you for coming on. Not a problem. I'm sure you'll be inundated with people reaching yeah, out. Yeah, all the behind the scenes yeah. going to be there. What lens do it. I need? <laughs> what lens do I need for this?